So uh, thank you very much, Sandy, for your introduction. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I am Shinya Yamanaka. So uh, let me, uh, OK. <laughs> so you know, I am now a scientist, but I started my career as a doctor, surgeon. 30 years ago. And it was my father who talked me into medicine. This is my father. Without his support and encouragement, I wouldn't be here today. I uh, respect him a lot. I like him a lot. Especially, I like, I like his hair. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, I am envious. <laughs> My father was not a doctor. He was a business, business person. He had a small factory in a small city in Osaka, Japan. So when I was born, he must have been very happy by having his own successor. But when I became a junior high student, he started saying this way, Shinya, you don't have to take over my business. Instead, you should become a doctor and help patients. I don't know why he said that. Maybe he thought his own son were not talented as a business person. His son was not brave enough to be a business person. I, I don't know. But anyway, I listened to him, and I became a doctor. My father was very delighted. I still remember. But soon after I became a doctor, my father passed away, when I still needed him a lot. Before he died, he must have been in pain. But he seemed to be happy, even smiling, by receiving some small medical procedures from his own son. He must have been very proud of his son becoming a doctor. However, I myself felt miserable. I felt useless because I was not able to help my own father as a young doctor. I was not help many other patients as well. Then I became more and more interested in medical research because I thought it would be medical research that could help patients suffering from intractable diseases and injuries. Patients like my father, not immediately, but in the future. That's why I decided to become a scientist. I went back to a graduate school, and after receiving my PhD, I came to San Francisco to join Gladstone Institute in 1993. I became a postdoc to continue my uh, training as a scientist. I had a clear vision. I wanted to help patients by doing medical research. But of course, it was easy to say but very difficult to achieve. <coughs> I spent many hours, many days, and many years in laboratories without significant success. 20 years later, however, I became extremely lucky to have a wonderful group of people, and that group developed 
a new technology. Our group was able to find a way to make a new type of stem cells, which we designated iPS cells. With this technology, we can convert your blood cells or skin cells into stem cells, iPS cells. The procedure is very simple. All we need is a small amount of your blood cells, just uh, uh, four or five ml. That's all we need. And all we have to do is also very simple. We just need to introduce a small number of genes into your blood or skin cells. That's it. After a month or two, we can have your own iPS cells. Well, the procedure is simple, but iPS cells are very powerful. We can expand iPS cells as much as we want. We could, ha we could have millions, we could have billions of your iPS cells. And after expanding cells, we can convert your iPS cells into many types of cells, such as brain, brain cells, heart cells, and liver cells. Another important aspect of this technology is that cells are rejuvenated during the process of iPS cell generation. So you may be uh, in your 50s, 60s, 70s, even more. But your iPS cells are basically zero year old, just like babies, because they have been rejuvenated. So that means if we make iPS cells from patients suffering from brain disease, such as Parkinson's disease, and if we make brain cells from iPS cells, those brain cells are not sick. Brain cells in the patients are, of course, sick. However, brain cells from patients' iPS cells are not sick because they have been rejuvenated. They are cells when the patient were babies. So this means by using iPS cell technology, we can prepare a large amount of healthy brain cells from patients suffering from brain diseases. So now we can use these cells in two major medical applications. First, we can transplant those healthy brain cells back into patient's brain to obtain functional recovery. This approach is known as regenerative medicine or cell therapy. We have been trying to apply this uh, approach, cell therapy, to many diseases and injuries. For, for example, uh, eye diseases, such as macular degeneration, brain diseases, such as Parkinson disease, and also uh, spinal cord injury, heart failure, liver failure, diabetes, many, many diseases. Also, uh, we have a similar approach. We have been trying to make immune cells, lymphocytes, that attack cancer cells from iPS cells. So this is going to be a new cancer therapy. This is the first medical application of iPS cells. Another yet equally important application of iPS cells is in drug discovery. Instead of transplanting back into patients, we can use 
iPS cells and brain cells or heart cells derived from iPS cells in laboratories. Laboratories of universities, laboratories at Gladstone Institute, or laboratories of pharmaceutical companies in order to make disease models, in order to perform drug screening. By using this approach, we have been working very hard to find a new cure, new medicine for many diseases, such as Alzheimer's diseases, ALS, and many so-called rare diseases or orphan diseases. So, thanks to this new technology, I believe I'm uh, one step closer to my vision. We really want to bring iPS cells to patients. We really want to help patients by using iPS cells. Of course, we still have a long, long way to go. We need to overcome many hurdles. Well, my father was very happy when I became a doctor. But soon after he passed away, I escaped from clinics and became a scientist. So I often think that my father may be upset about my career change. <laughs> he may be saying, Shinya, stop shaking test tubes. <laughs> Go back to clinics, help patients. I can hear it saying somewhere. So I really want to and I really need to bring iPS cells and reprogramming technologies to patients as quickly as possible before I can meet my father again in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>